This happened to me around one and a half decades ago. I was in my mid-30s back then, and an experienced hunter. I lived a rather simple life in the suburbs of Michigan, living off the grid, hunting to put food on the table and keep my fridge stocked. My story begins one afternoon in December, the cold Michigan winter just creeping in. As a longtime resident, I was accustomed to the area's weather patterns and wildlife behaviors. I knew where to find the biggest deer and the best game trails. So when the first snow fell, I loaded up my pickup truck with my hunting gear and set off deep into the woods. I left my house at around 2 in the afternoon, the pale winter sun bearing down. I drove for a good 45 minutes, navigating the nearly deserted mud roads that I knew pretty well, like the back of my hand. I wasn't anxious or antsy. I've always found peace amidst the solitude of nature. The endless trees, the silence, the crisp air, it's my ideal surroundings. But on this day, something just felt off. There was this unusual stillness around me, something that my gut instinct picked up on, but I could not put my finger on it. This wasn't something I'd experienced before, but I rationalized it in my mind as just the effect of winter approaching. After reaching my chosen spot, a small clearing by a frozen creek, I retrieved my rifle, donned my bulky camouflaged hunting jacket, and started following some fresh tracks. I felt like I was an adequate tracker at the time, having honed these skills over the years and I could identify the subtle difference in the patterns, knowing a deer's age and even its size to a certain degree. I slowly walked, staying vigilant for any signs of movement or noise. Several hours had passed, and dusk began to settle in. I still had not bagged any game. It was odd, because the area was usually abundant in game, but that day, it seemed devoid of any real life. Then, out of the blue, I heard a faint rustling noise from the distance. Sensing a possible opportunity, I steadied myself and focused on the sound's direction. As I was approaching the area, the sound became louder and louder, like something substantial was moving through the undergrowth. Getting closer, I could see something through the sparse trees. It was difficult to make out in the dying light, but I could tell you this, it was very tall, much larger than any deer or bear I'd ever encountered. It was dark, probably due to its fur, and appeared very muscular. It was hunched over, and it had long arms reaching nearly to the ground. My mind was battling between what I knew of Michigan's wildlife and what I was seeing. I knew for certain that this thing was foreign to the parts. Forgetting all about the deer, I watched in awe and fear as this unknown animal moved with a sort of calculated grace, despite its size. Its movements were fluid like a predator, not a prey. It was then it turned slightly, and I could see a canine-like head atop a very large bulky body, with pointed ears unmistakably sticking out from its head. Frightened yet curious, I watched as this creature abruptly turned and ran off into the woods, quickly disappearing from sight. I stood there, frozen in that spot for at least half an hour, trying to make sense of what I saw. Subconsciously, I remembered the legends from my grandfather, who talked about something called the Dogman, something I just brushed off for the longest time. And as I was regaining my composure, something happened. I heard this monstrous roar and this scream that I had never heard before in my life that turned my blood cold. Turning my direction, I could see these bright yellow eyes looking at me. Instantly, I knew down in my core that something was very wrong. I was being hunted. Everything around me instantly became ominous and foreboding. I knew I had no other choice but to flee. So not taking my eyes off this thing, I slowly backed away as this thing just glared at me. Once I had gained enough distance between me and it, I slowly turned around and bolted for the safety of my truck. Once getting there, everything was still quiet and I could hear something big trying to be quiet, moving through the woods. Although even in December, with all the vegetation gone, I could hear it, but I couldn't see it, like I was dealing with something that was a master of camouflage. Safe to say I didn't spend much time hanging around to shake hands with this thing. Once I got on my pickup truck, that was it. I flew out of there like a bat out of hell. 
Now, you can imagine with just being the nature of what I experienced, I didn't really share this with anyone, out of fear or being disregarded or even laughed at. Even today, I still get the chills thinking about this thing. That truly shook me to my core. But, in a way, it kind of opened my eyes to what's really out there. Even now, I don't go back to that section of woods in Michigan. There's just something about it that feels off, like it's not my territory to be in, or that maybe sometimes I might be the one who gets hunted. I'll relay an incident that happened about a decade ago, when my wife and I were much bolder, when we were eager to explore every hidden nook and cranny our area and its surrounding areas had to offer. This was back when we were living in the suburbs of Boise. Being outdoor enthusiasts, we enjoyed activities like camping, hiking, fishing, and the likes. Living in the city was too noisy, and it was nice to escape the daily realities. Nature and rural areas were always our sanctuary, especially on the weekends. And so one weekend, we decided to go fishing in an old quarry that was around 20 to 25 minutes from where we lived. Conversations with a couple of friends of mine who were fishermen led me to believe that if you threw a line in there, you'd more than likely pull out a really good-sized trout. We had just purchased a new rod and some other fishing gear and were eager to test them out, hoping to enjoy a wonderful, quiet, peaceful day of fishing. Well, we reached the quarry around mid-morning, probably about 10 or 11. The area was pleasantly deserted. It was vast. It was a quiet water body surrounded by ragged rocks and dense woodlands. We spent the initial few hours doing what we loved, fishing, talking, just enjoying peaceful nature. Now, as the sun began to slowly crest over the mountains, we were readying ourselves to pack up and head back home. It was then that we heard a very unfamiliar noise that seemed to echo from across the quarry. It was a roar, one similar to that of a large reptile. We had seen enough nature documentaries to distinguish between the different animal sounds, but this one was like anything we'd ever heard before. Startled, we looked around, squinting in the fading daylight to find any sign of what might have made the noise. To our disbelief, we saw something, what I can describe as a reptilian-like creature, awkwardly near the water's edge across the quarry. This was no ordinary animal. This thing was bulky, its skin rigid and seeming impenetrable, scales gleaming under the sun. It was like a remnant of a bygone era, something too prehistoric and monstrous to be even roaming the quarries of Boise. We were shocked and afraid. We quickly packed everything and fled as fast as we could. We knew that we were encountering something unnatural, and we didn't take time to ask too many questions. Though we were frightened by our experience, it certainly did something to us. It marked us, in a way. And for whatever reason, I'm sure you'll call me crazy, but we actually returned the next day, equipped with cameras, hoping that it would show itself again so we could get a picture. I also brought my sturdy, trusty binoculars. However, our arrival was met with nothing but the usual peace and quiet of the quarry. We would wait anxiously, scanning the water and the vast surrounding land, but... After hours of fruitless waiting, we just decided to leave and accept it as maybe just a one-time thing. Maybe it was a fluke. And just when we were about to turn our backs, my wife and I noticed something in the sky. A dull metallic object hovering. It had a disc shape and an array of flickering lights. I pointed this out to my wife. Her eyes grew wide as we spotted the object move in strange patterns. We were rooted to our spot, fixated on this thing. It was something we just could not explain. Simple enough, it was a UFO. After moving around for what seemed like a few more minutes, the object just kind of disintegrated into the sky. We never saw it after that. I really don't have any explanations for what we saw. It seemed to surpass all biological and celestial boundaries. We did share our story with a close-knit circle of friends, but... Most of them dismissed it as a work of mere fiction, or an effect of an overactive imagination, but my wife and I are pretty no-nonsense people. We never bought into any of the paranormal stuff. Uh, I don't even think this is paranormal, but you get what I'm saying. We know what we saw, and I firmly believe that we saw something that was similar to a UFO. Those memories will always stay with me. 
Now, as far as an explanation, I can't think of anything else. Can you? My story was a chance occurrence from a night out with my friends. A handful of us grown-ups piled in a van for a drive home from a party we'd attended, which was held in a small, isolated farmhouse. The van was a large one, big enough to accommodate the nine of us comfortably with room for all the gear we'd brought along for our journey. Now, our path followed a narrow, winding road surrounded by patches of woodland and walls of tall pine. The drive was on a moonless night, with scant stars winked from the deep purple swath of sky overhead, creating a canvas of black that would swallow everything. Things were relatively quiet amongst us as we're winding down from the day, except for the occasional bout of laughter and conversation. The overall atmosphere in the car was relatively calm and relaxed, oblivious to what was lined up for us. Up ahead, I could see the long and winding narrow road flanked by tall grass and patches of woods. It was never lit, and the distinct intensity of the natural darkness always left me uncomfortable, but being with friends usually eased that feeling. As our van continued to roll forward, the radio lost its connection with the station we'd been listening to, and everything fell uncomfortably silent. As we neared a bend in the road, the uneasy silence was initially shattered by Thompson, One of my friends who was sitting in the back, closer to the window, he shouts, Stop! What's in the ditch? As we slowed down to a crawl, everybody thought it was a large black bear. Following his gaze and what we saw, we realized this wasn't a bear. There, standing in the ditch against the towering trees, was an enormous upright canine. I don't mean a stray dog or a wandering wolf. This was nothing like any of us had seen before. It was massive, to put it simply, and it was on its hind legs while still pressed into the ditch as to remain hidden from direct view. To say that this was roughly the size of a grizzly bear would be an understatement. Its fur, silver under starlight, clung tightly to its rippling muscles, emphasizing its overwhelming build. Over its burly shoulder, it held a dead deer, lifeless eyes staring back at us even in the harsh artificial light. The sight was gruesome and surreal. The deer was a sizable creature itself, but the canine held it as effortlessly as one would carry a bag of groceries. Stunned, silence fell over us as we watched this thing from the relative safety of the van. Now, our driver had not fully hit the brakes yet, but we were crawling at this point to try and look at what this was. Suddenly, with a powerful throw... This thing threw the dead deer down onto the roadside as if marking its territory, and in the blink of an eye, it directed its gaze toward the van. And before we could even register what was happening, it lunged at the vehicle with a swift, deafening roar that nearly knocked the entire van over. It tried to attack. Bam, bam, bam. Powerful strikes all along the side, and this thing began to try to break into the side of the van. Before it could do anything, though... We floored it. This thing had grip of the door handle and nearly opened it. But because the speed we were going and the angle the driver was turning the van, I don't think it could get a proper grip. Not to mention its hands were humongous. It pulled itself up to the back window, and we could see its breath fogging up the glass in sporadic huffs, its eyes seething with hatred just inches away from us. It was probably looking at us like a tuna can of prey. We were all screaming. For that first 30 seconds, I thought the van was going to flip over, just due to the way we were driving and, well, this thing pounding on the side. And, just like instantly, this thing bound off into the darkness. We did about 70 or 80 miles home the entire way. The people who I was with that night were actually some close family friends, and, well, we haven't really discussed it since that night. I don't really feel there's a reason to. It's easier to pretend this stuff doesn't exist than try to deal and face with reality, if you understand what I mean. Several weeks ago, I reported for my night shift at one of the rural government facilities located about 18 miles from the nearest town. The area was tucked between sporadic yet large patches of forest and bordered on one side by a winding creek that would snake its way down from the hills, Night shifts were never popular on this night, and somehow the whole thing has handed over to me. The nights in the wilderness are usually never quiet, 
with the hum of nocturnal creatures singing in their sympathy that is interspersed with the occasional crackling of dry leaves as deer and other animals walk on them. But several weeks before this, during my routine night shifts, the silence was something unusual that I had noticed. Isn't it strange when you hear nothing in a place that's never quiet? Don't judge me for being a sissy, but I don't fear darkness. And I'll admit it, I'm not afraid of isolation either. After all, I grew up in a quiet swamp just by the river. I've seen stuff that you wouldn't hear about in tales or see in the movies, but the absence of any noise just gave me the creeps. Cut to the night when I had my experience. This started off just like any other. I was sitting in my parked truck, waiting for the break of dawn, filling out monotonous paperwork. Since I noticed the silence and the atypical lack of wildlife, I had made it a habit to bring a can of wet dog food just to attract any creature that might be around. On this night, the silence was there, making the clicking sound of the can top opening echo into the night. Then I heard a deep, guttural noise. My heart pounded as I scrambled to drop the can of bait and step back towards the safety of my truck. The growl felt more of a quake, vibrating every part of my body. I drove away, trying to shake off the experience, returning half an hour later to this very spot, ready for anything that the unknown might entail, I spotted something large, very dark, swiftly crossing the road to disappear into a field overrun with wild blackberry bramble. It moved with grace, the predatory kind, with the fluidity seen in predators who stalk their prey. It was very black, had a longish snout, and a body shape that differed from all quadrupeds that I had seen. The design seemed alien. The way its ears folded back was something I never seen. But the dog food and the shape? I concluded it was maybe canine, but I don't know. Anyway, the details of what I saw marked a permanent imprint on my memory. Even though my memory plays games with me, ever since I sustained a traumatic brain injury shortly before I quit my law enforcement career, I don't think I can ever forget what I saw. Terrified but also fascinated, I stayed quiet about the encounter. Now, a few months after, I chanced upon an image of what people were calling a dogman. It was a photo of something that stood erect on two legs, but looked nearly identical to what I saw that night. I know, it sounds crazy, but I'm not hallucinating, and it was definitely not belittling anyone's beliefs. That single experience, those few moments have changed the way I look at things. It was intriguing, and it terrified me at the same time. Sometimes I find myself going back to that spot every night, hoping to get another glimpse at this thing. It makes me wonder, is it really as we think it is, or is there a parallel reality just waiting to be uncovered? My buddy and I had decided to go fishing down in southern Oregon on a Saturday afternoon. We were near the border, maybe five or six miles from the California state line. We had driven down a long and poorly maintained dirt road at just about the warmest part of the day. We weren't catching much just tossing lines into the water and enjoying some peace out in nature. We both heard this strange noise that was reverberating through the trees. It was almost like a howl, but it didn't sound like any of the typical wildlife that we were accustomed to hearing in this region. We were both puzzled, but brushed it off as our ears playing tricks on us. Later that evening, as the temperature began to drop, we decided to set up camp near the edge of the tree line. We were just finishing up cooking some modest supper over our campfire when that strange howling noise echoed through the trees again. This time, it was considerably closer and much more unnerving. My buddy and I just exchanged glances, both of us visibly shaken. We decided to quickly finish our meals and head into the safety of our tent for the evening time. As we were cleaning up, I caught a whiff of a pungent, rotten smell on the wind. It was very strong, and unlike anything I'd ever smelled before. We took a mental note, and quickly made our way into our shelter for the night. We didn't say much that night, each of us trying to fall asleep while listening for any unwelcome sounds outside the tent. I must have finally fallen asleep because the next thing I knew, I was violently woken up by that same howling sound. 
It was incredibly loud and seemed to be right outside our tent for just a moment. My heart was racing. I was too scared to even move, let alone go outside to investigate. The howling lasted only a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity laying there in the darkness with my heart going crazy. Well, the next morning, we both related the same experience to one another and packed up as quickly as possible, leaving behind the beauty of that fishing spot in favor of the comfort of our homes. Now, I'm sharing this story not only because it was deeply unsettling, but because I believe that what we experienced that night was unnatural and possibly linked to something known as Bigfoot. Look, I'm typically a skeptic when it comes to these sorts of things, but that experience in Southern Oregon really shook me to my core. If anyone out there knows more about these strange happenings, well, I'd be very interested in hearing what you had to say. I'm writing to you today from Bellevue, Idaho, surrounded by the beauty of the Magic Valley. Well, a few nights back, I had an encounter that left me questioning the world around me. It was two in the morning, early Saturday to be exact, and I had gone out for an impromptu photography session after wrapping up a late shift at the office in Ketchum. Something about the Idaho night sky, especially with the view from the top of Bellevue Hill, knowing it's just you and billions of stars, well, that's serene bliss. That day, however, the stars I was gazing at weren't the only thing illuminating the darkness. As I set up my gear and started snapping shots out of the corner of my eye, I saw something that wasn't supposed to be there. Not quite sure what I had seen, I quickly turned towards the direction and, lo and behold, there was a rather large shape coming towards me from the direction of Haley. Enormous, at least three times the size of my pickup truck, it moved smoothly through the air, the calm Idaho night hiding its approach. Sleek, elongated, yet not aerodynamic, but the unidentified object moved with a strange elegance. Now, what left me truly dumbstruck was the fact that it wasn't exactly solid, translucent, more or less, like a shimmering curtain dancing in a summer breeze. It was there and yet not. The sight of the canvas, the sight on the canvas of a hundred thousand stars was, if anything, pretty otherworldly. Rather unexpectedly, it began flashing all sorts of bright colors of red. It all felt more celestial than anything. Before I could jolt out of my awe-induced stupor and grab my camera, it just seemed to fade out, perhaps merging with the night sky. Just as I sighed with disbelief and residual fear, I heard a noise behind me. Pivoting around, I saw a figure between me and the glare of my pickup's headlights. Tall, shrouded in shadows, but abnormally tall. Another plunge into the abyss of the unknown. Who or what was this stranger in the middle of the night on a secluded hilltop? The figure just stood still for what seemed like an eternity. Then, as quickly as it had appeared, it bolted towards the base of the hill at a speed that defied human possibilities. I didn't chase it. I felt like it indicated a don't-follow-me gesture. I gathered my senses and realized that the fear had finally evaporated. Whatever I had seen, it was not from this world. Maybe the universe is more mysterious than we think, and Idaho nights are indeed magical, but a strange, strange thing. Even now, weeks later, I can't help but think about what I saw that night. My question is, what do you think it was? Back in the summer of 2009, a group of buddies and I found ourselves hanging around my uncle's farm in the heart of Mariposa County. Just a quick note that this place always felt, well, a little quirky, for lack of a better term. Before it came to belong to my uncle, the property functioned as an old miner's outpost during the Gold Rush era. You wander into the barn and you would find old rusted mining equipment and artifacts. Let me get to the actual encounter. So we're sitting around the farmhouse and we hear a strange noise outside. It's kind of this mechanical humming that seemed to drown out the typical farmyard sounds. We looked around at each other, brows furrowed in curiosity, and my friend Charlie, probably the bravest among us, and asked, y'all hearing that? 
Well, we all nodded, getting up and following Charlie out the back door. And there it was, hovering above the apple orchard, pivoting and rotating in an almost eerie manner. A UFO. This wasn't any usual aircraft, though. It was gleaming sharply contrasted against the deep blue canvas of the sky and the way it changed shape like it was dancing midair. It was quite a spectacle. We were frozen, knees knocking against each other, hearts throbbing. I remember running inside to grab our uncle. I found him in his rocking chair, whittling wood. We got company, I told him. Pointing out the back door, he looked out, then back at me and laughed and said, Oh, that's our usual visitor. Ain't nothing to worry about. He then proceeded to tell us about his encounter with a strange ship that visited his farm almost every month, right around the full moon. He mentioned he would see a tall woman with ruby-red eyes named Ethel, who would sometimes appear and ask him questions about Earth and its people. As per my uncle, Ethel claimed she was from a planet 50 light-years away from Earth and would come here to study our species. I could never accept that as a child, believing that my uncle was simply pulling our leg with another one of his tall tales. Yet, standing there with my buddies, under the shadow of a bona fide flying saucer, it all felt too real. After a few moments of us gawking and astounded murmurings, the thing gave out a bright, blinding flash and zoomed upward into the sky, leaving a silver streak of smoke behind, and it was completely gone. For the rest of the afternoon, it was all we could talk about. We just kept buzzing and tossing around theories about extraterrestrial life and the fact that it's real. Truth be told, we never had another encounter. At least not as direct as that summer afternoon. I would move out much later on to attend college in L.A. But each time I came back to visit, I just kept finding myself unable to tear my eyes away from the sky half expecting to see our interstellar visitor dancing atop that same farm. Maybe somewhere she's out there. And in fact, there's so much more truth to life being out there than we can even begin to imagine. I'm originally from a small town in Oregon, and as a solid part of my growing up years, I resided just a stone's throw from a local park. If you could paint a picture of my childhood... It would undoubtedly feature countless moments of endless laughter and adventures of exploring the wilderness with my close-knit group of friends. However, it wouldn't take long to realize that something was different. We stumbled upon some unexplainable drumming sounds infiltrating the silence of the forest trails during one of our expeditions, akin to abandoned soldiers of war communicating from afar or similar to the audio depiction of the infamous Jumanji drums echoing from another plane of existence. The randomness of it made it more eerie. Flickering lights observed in the secluded parts of the woods further fueled our curiosity and added a pinch of paranormal to our innocent adventures, especially as dusk approached. A lot of us have also experienced the unsettling feeling of being scrutinized or followed while we reluctantly walked the trails alone. All of it was admittedly unsettling, but being us kids, we shrugged it off. As the years passed, I graduated from high school in 2010, and our harmless group fun metamorphosed into solitary and reflective strolls around the park at night, often just to clear my mind. I found solace in the dark silence of the park, on one particular night, I remember hearing the ringtone of a new text message echoing in the silence, but on checking my phone, there were no new notifications. I brushed it off as a mind trick, but the replication of the sound over and over again from the woods left me concerned. Against my better judgment, I decided to walk home with the creepy text tone relentlessly following me as I rushed through the darkness fading out only once I reached my neighborhood. Being a teenager with the heightened curiosity, I narrated my experience with my friends who immediately jumped on the idea of exploring the park at night because it was haunted. I was a bit reluctant initially, but reassured by their enthusiasm and the fact that we were all formidable young men, including one of my friends being a boxer and another being a football lineman. Coincidentally, the night set off on our adventure, 
There was a slight sleet coming down, but not harsh enough to ruin our plans. Just enough to add an extra touch of goosebumps to the night's proceedings. We started to explore. In the middle of our banter, we reached a strange clearing with a fishing pond. I can recall feeling a sudden wave of discomfort creeping up on us, as if the mysterious elements of the woods were quietly observing us as we ventured deeper into their turf. We hesitated, but none of us wanted to be the first one to back down, so we just soldiered on. As we moved forward, a sudden rush of adrenaline, like an unexpected jolt of electricity, had surged right through me, enough to raise every hair on the back of my neck. We crossed the clearing, and just as we're joking around about our unwanted apprehensions, a loud thud resonated from the woods we were about to enter. As the rest of my friends scanned the front, my other friend and I twisted our bodies to scan the unlit field behind us. We saw something for a brief moment. We glimpsed and saw something unlike we had ever seen before. What many refer to as the rake is what I believe we saw. It was just a glimpse, but we saw a creature with a bony exterior and luminescent skin. It embodied an almost humanoid form, but progressed in an unusual crawling manner, dragging its front limbs while its hind ones lay motionless. Before we can even comprehend what we had seen, it slithered deeper into the field. Simultaneously, our friends had caught sight of something else resembling the details we later described. It poked its towering head around a tree just a short distance from where we stood. They noticed the same luminescent skin reflecting light back at us. I really have no way to describe what it is that we witnessed or saw, but it certainly freaked us all out.